Hey, and welcome to another episode of Love and Black with Tori and Terry. What's up, baby? Hey, honey. Friday night. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. This hey, is a good one. It, it is. It is. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It is a special episode tonight, and mm-hmm. uh, we're going to kind of cut to the chase because we have in our presence, actually, you know, if you guys know we're, we're, we're doing this uh, via satellite tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These old TV shows. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I know, right? But we have an exceptional treat for you guys tonight. It is our female songbird. She is not only an inspiring singer, but she is a Grammy Award winning, not Grammy nominated, Grammy Award winning singer. Yes. Our niece. Our niece. Yes. Our niece. Yes, yes, yes. She's here with us today. I'm so excited. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, we're proud to say that she's our, you know, our niece and all, and, you know, not just because of her talent, but just because of who she is. So. Oh, you'll see. Yeah. And once you guys meet her, you'll fall in love with her big time. Yeah. <laughs> So we are um, gonna uh, have you guys enjoy this special edition of Love and Black tonight. And uh, where after we come back from commercial, we will be here with our niece, Grammy Award winning Crystal Autumn. Yay! <laughs> be right back. Be right back. <laughs> one of our sponsors love in a box and guess what we got a couple new sponsors coming up and we will be introducing them to you guys uh shortly as soon as we get everything prepared for them yeah they're but, coming out uh, soon yeah i just love this i love the collaboration with them. it's exactly. really it's a good feeling it's and remember if you guys want to advertise or be a sponsor of our show you got to do is just email us at love and black the number one at gmail.com and um, you know right. let us know hit us hit us up let us know what you want to do and if you have a letter that you want to have read on air mm-hmm. or if you have a topic you want us to discuss email us at, email us at that same address as well okay so before we went to commercial we were talking about our niece Grammy Award winning Crystal Autumn and we have her via satellite Hey, and we're back. Hey, guys, we, uh, as I mentioned before the break, we have our special guest, our niece, Grammy Award winning Crystal Autumn, here joining us. And we are so excited to have her. She's not only a singer, she's not only a songwriter, but she is our niece, and we're proud to say so. And we, um, let's see. I think I'm gonna start where she was. She was born in LA, so that mm-hmm. kind of gives her mm-hmm. the little singing cred. You know, yeah, yeah, people yeah. from LA and all these different <laughs> talents. And, stuff. and uh, the star is born. The star is born. <laughs> but uh, she's a 2018 graduate of Fisk University, and uh, she has two special accomplishments that were three actually. We're gonna bring bring up in the show. But the first two is she was uh, Miss Fisk. And then she was also Miss HBCU. That's something. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's yeah. such an accomplishment. She recently received her first Grammy uh, for her contributions on the feature as a featured soloist on celebrating fifth 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 hundred and fiftieth anniversary. And on that album, she sang "Waiting in the Water." And so, Crystal is not only a lover of just fashion and design, but she's also an avid environmentalist and a holistic community development specialist. She's got her hands full. She's wonderful. <laughs> we are so glad that you took the time to play for us, baby. Yeah, welcome to the show. 
How's Thank it going? You so much. It's good. I'm just winding down for the night, so I'm happy to be spending. <laughs> you like you going to party with that dress on? Huh? No, it's a. It ain't, it's just a shirt. It's nothing. Sp- it's like t-shirt material. <laughs> Look Show solid to us. I know, right? <laughs> so what's going on? How's everything with you? Oh, everything has been good. Very busy. Just trying to, you know, maintain balance um, and hopefully, you know, just open myself up to whatever changes, you know, God has yeah. for me. So, yeah. You know what? How do you, okay, you know, if I want a Grammy, and, and I know this is a, you know, a, a secular thing for me, but if I want a Grammy, I'd be like, hey, do you ever want a Grammy? Oh, hey, uh-uh. you, but, you know, but you're just so calm. Cool. And, he would. and I would. He would. You know, everybody know me. You know me, there. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you uh how do you just stay so composed? You know, it's it's all still very surreal because most people most singers don't get to say this early in their career. Mm-hmm. I I have a Grammy, you know? It's I mean, <laughs> most people that have been doing music for Ever. their whole lives don't get to say it. And so you know, have it having it happen before I even release my first album, or you know what I'm saying. It, any major milestone in my personal music career is just like it was confirmation from God for me. Like you can do it. You were meant to do it. Yeah. Here's the award to say so. Right. You know I, can't wait. Right there, I can't baby. wait. I know, right? But you know what? <laughs> I can't wait to see like that. Like you just said, most artists don't even expect even actors you know that that uh you know held the award they don't even get them you know, for oscars for oscars and, oscars and that, things yeah, yeah. and before you even release your first album you have a grammy i mean how is that going to sit the tone, with it's the tone <laughs> and, and you know what you can't go anywhere but further up mm-hmm. because you already broke the ceiling <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, like that that video star just keep rising to the top. Yeah, I'm like I said, it's it's surreal. Even when we got nominated, it was crazy because I was sitting in my room looking at all of you know everybody's announcing their nominations on social media, and I'm like, man, one day I hope um, <laughs> I, I just want to be able to say that. And mm-hmm. my phone started going crazy, and I'm like, what, what's going on? They're like, Crystal. It's nominated, it's nominated. <laughs> I'm like, God is moving very fast. Oh, yeah. Very fast. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, that, is, that is awesome. So check this out. My wife has a, a Grammy award winning uh, special segment on this show that she does every show. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna let her explain it to you. With all of our guests, it's like a little icebreaker, but it also gives our audience even more of a peek into who you are. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Apple or Android? Apple. Okay. Until I make it, and then I'm getting a little trap phone, a little flip phone. <laughs> yeah. No, one is my you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, my okay. phone does not receive text. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, here we go. Aretha or Billy? Ooh. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Aretha. Okay. Okay. Roses or sunflowers? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So cool. half of the half of That's so cool. You I know, just... I got roses behind me back okay, there. So. Wait, all of them, child. Yes. Um, I like them all. Any, any, okay. any of them. The whole garden. Yeah. Okay. Theater <laughs> or concert hall? Concert hall. Okay. Mm. Watermelon or mangoes? Mangoes. All right. <laughs> boots, boots or barefoot? Mm. Oh, this is so hard for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> no reason. You know what? It's going to be boots because I need the extra, like, the height. four or five inches. <laughs> yeah, boots. <laughs> Last but not least, drum roll. Love or money? Love. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like yes, yes, Love is the yes, key, I girl. Hey, you know what? I always thought you had a special affinity for watermelon. You know, I love watermelon. And I honestly just started liking watermelon last year. Uh-huh. I don't know what it was, but everybody was celebrating Juneteenth. 
and there was just everything was super black. So I'm like, you know what? what? I'm, about to, I'm about to bust up one of these big watermelons. And <laughs> I love it. I don't know. But mangoes are, I don't, mangoes hands down for all time. Yeah. They're yeah. just tropical, perfect, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like cutting them up in a nice soup all together would be mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So you don't have to drink one for the other. You can, you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even though we know, can you tell our viewers how you first got into music? So I first got into music. I started playing the flute at mm -hmm. nine years old. And usually I, I, I never include that, but I'm starting to realize the more I learn about myself as an artist, how much instruments inform I mm -hmm. guess my approach to my vocals. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I started playing flute when I was nine and I was really good, but it was so embarrassing and nerdy back then. By the time I got to high school, I was like, no yep. band, no nothing, don't mention it. <laughs> you know what? It's funny because I think everyone, whether they're an artist, singer, or a musician or whatever, I think we all got to start with a recorder, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that little recorder. I went from the recorder, the recorder to the flute. Um, and then eventually I started singing when um, my family moved back to Oakland in 2010. Uh -huh. And, you know, it was a rough time for us, but music was the thing that got me through. It was like my peace of mind, my little secret, sacred space. And I would just be, my sisters will tell you, I would take a shower for four hours and just be in there singing. And don't, everybody know, don't, don't knock on that door. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. You got a question for me? Yeah, you know, I just, it's, it's the waiting in the water and you receive the, um, the award. What does it do now, knowing this now and, you know, what, how does it change you? Does it change you? Yeah, wow. So the crazy thing about the song, so the the album is a compilation of um, songs that were performed at a concert at the um, Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And we do the show every year, the Jubilee Singers. It was the weight in the water was my solo that I sing all over the place all the time. Um, but when it was selected to be on the album, because there was way more songs in the concert, and I'm like, how in the world did he choose the the the, 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 the label or whoever you know was responsible choose this song to be on there? Because I was so overly critical of myself. I promise you, like. It's just crazy how that happens. And so I'll say this, it changed me in a sense that at the time I thought it wasn't good enough, you know, and I'm learning throughout my journey to, I guess, relinquish my need to be perfect because God will take my not good enough, put it as the first track on a Grammy award winning album. And that for me was like, okay, you know, I have no more excuses because I'm here and I have a purpose. Yes. Right. Whatever my opinions of, you know what I'm saying, what my abilities are, it doesn't matter as long as God keeps putting me in position and giving me the platform, you know what I'm saying, to, to utilize the gift and to touch people. So I'm learning to just take my ego out of it, essentially. Right. <laughs> I, I was just thinking of it. Yeah. I was just like, wow. All you have to do is remain as humble as you are now and let things flow because mm -hmm. you don't want that pressure now. I mean, starting out the gate that high, it's almost like being a kid actor. Then, you know, once he gets a, or he or she gets to adulthood, then they're not finding a role that they want because they're typecast. So let's hope you're one that you're typecast into Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but two, I mean, you know, you know, we're always overcritical of ourselves more so than anything mm -hmm. and um i think you said it right you know you know god took your not so good which you thought was not so good and you know it doesn't matter to god because he's going to just choose you because he loves you well not only yeah. you know and, and to piggyback off that 
you know, I was I was listening to Kirk Franklin today. I love his show Good Words. So there's a plug, you know, for you, Kirk. But he yeah, has a sure. podcast and it's, it's called Good Work. And one of the things, you know, that we all do is we can be so critical of ourselves and he's critical of himself. And he says, you know, thinking about it, hindsight, that that's being critical of God because God made us. Yeah. Who knows, you know? And even like when you were saying I'm being humble, that is the key. That's where the blessings lie. I tell my husband, I'm like, we're so busy, our nose is to the grindstone 24 7. I mean, case in point, you know, doing interviews at night, late night, and talking mm-hmm. by day. But the thing is, is that I said, let's just stay in this. You know, we get these pictures, and it's like, no, oh, this is great. But it's like, we want to stay with our nose to the grindstone, just really present in the moment of everything that we're doing and the fruits, you know, that we're sowing mm-hmm. so that. It continues because as long as we stay in that place, that's where the blessings lie. And I mean, Lord, the Lord will just literally be like, this one, this one, this one. Yeah. it's no pomp and circumstance. It's just like, come on, now this is happening now. And it's like, oh my God, this is happening. You know, but yeah. we're so present in that that push. Yeah. Staying present in the push. And, and you know, with us, you know, there's a thing, you know, you know, scripture, you know, the much is given, much is required. Mm-hmm. And we're so into it and we remain as humble as we can. But by being so into it, we don't even realize that we were already there when we were there because we're always pressing towards the next. So if we can offer you that as encouragement, I mean, you know, you have to keep on, you know, even if it, it you know, feels like things are getting down, even if you feel like, okay, when's the next guest coming or when's the next, you know, mm-hmm. show opportunity coming? I mean, you know, you have to just keep it all in God's hands. And he, you know, like, like, it's, like look, you know, that, that saying that, uh, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him what your plans are. Right. So you you were taking your so critical song, and God was like, hey, I'm watching. You, you, you show up something. Stop moaning. Yeah. And you know what? Too, what's just so wonderful is that in that when my husband was saying that, meaning what's our next assignment so that we can please the Lord? Because the good thing about that is that smelling the roses along the way yeah. because of the and each project. Just enjoy that moment, that process, you know. Don't worry about where there is, you know, to reach there. Just be there in that moment. Exactly. You know, chapter time. That's the full journey, you know, when you experience the fullness of all of it. Mm -hmm. So Mm I I know that you're reveling in this, even though you're still like pinch me in my (laughs) dreaming, you know, but um, the humility, we can see it on you, honey, and it's just, Definitely. it's so beautiful. It's That's what just makes it even more beautiful. Yeah. Hey, you know, when I was reading your bio, uh, you know, to the viewers, uh, part of what I said was that you are a songwriter also, right? So mm-hmm. where did that inspiration come from? Because being so young, you know, where did that inspiration come from? Oh, man. Where does the inspiration <laughs> from my songwriting? <laughs> I wear my heart on my sleeve. That's where that comes from. <laughs> Sometimes we got half of me there. What's going on? On this sleeve, you see. <laughs> yeah, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and honestly, that's one. I mean, songwriting for me, and I, I learned this um, back when I was. It was like a school play I did or something, and I was playing Ella Fitzgerald. Mm. And um, I had to learn a little bit about her background. And she would say, like, she she didn't have many interviews because she was afraid of, you know, speaking a lot of times. And music and songwriting was her outlet to be able to express her innermost thoughts. And for me, that's how I started even singing. I was extremely shy, you know, and I had a lot of emotions bottled up that I didn't know how to communicate. Um, with people so songwriting it w- it was songwriting before it was even poetry you know um, it, it's it's deep it's in me you know what I'm saying like I, I wish I could even say it comes from me but it's almost like the best songwriting advice I got was when you think of a song write it right then because chances are it's songs are like a spirit kind of passing through you you yeah. know and if you don't grab it it's gonna float on to the next person and you're gonna hear your song idea on the radio. <laughs> I thought of that, but um so yeah, I would say songwriting is just trying to get in tune with that innermost expression of myself and then 
allowing spirit to carry the rest out, you know? So is that part of your creative process or is that totally different? Uh, my creative process is random. <laughs> it honestly is it's morphed. It depends on who I'm working with. I try yeah. to just remain as flexible as possible because sometimes it's as simple as like singing a melody in my shower that I'm like, oh, this is new. And it's got some words to it. Let me record on my phone. And then right, other right. times, you know, it's it's much more collaborative. It's sitting down for hours with something on loop. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Until um, until we can work the song out. So it just depends. You know, speaking of collaboration, who would you like to collaborate with? If you who would I like to collaborate with? Okay, I actually have. Let me. I have a little list now. A little list. All right. Yeah. A, just a little list. Just a little list. Um, Stevie Wonder, oh, yeah. Lauren Hill, Ooh. and D'Angelo, and and Erica Badu. Real well, okay. The list is the list. Is okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> keep going. Um, let me yeah, let me just throw them all out there. Uh, <laughs> you never know who's gonna be watching, but um, who else? I mean, of course, like Beyonce, that'd be crazy, but you know. <laughs> you, you know, no caution to the wind. I, I don't know this was an age thing, even though uh, she came out um, in, in my early 30s, but um, you said Lauren Hill, and you know, your cousin, Sosa, you know, one day she was in, it was a few years ago, she was in, you know, we were driving somewhere, I think I was taking her to school, and um, we were listening to the music and Lauren Hill came on and she just bust out, ooh, that's the greatest singer ever. And I almost wrecked the car. I was like, what are we talking about? I mean, I like her music, but I mean, I have a lot of other songs in my head. You know, that's so I'm not, choice. no, no, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, what I, what I was saying was, you know. Love you, Lauren. Yeah, we love you, Lauren. But what I was asking you though, uh, I mean, is that a generational thing with you guys? Since you guys were kind of brought up on that Lauren Hill era? Yeah, maybe that's it. I think it's like, it's the realness. You know what I'm saying? That's what I aspire to bring to my music is like, okay, let me not just tell a story that I think people want to hear. Let me tell you the thoughts I have. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. things that make yeah. me angry, the yeah. things that make me sad. Right? Yeah. You know? Oh my God, I mean, one of the favorites, I think that why Sophia picked that, one of the favorites of us girls is water. I mean, yes. it's water. Right? It literally just, it oh, cleanses oh, you when you listen to oh, it. Yeah. And so, Oh, yeah. yeah, to be like that dynamic of an artist, to be able to make people feel so many different things, to give people confidence, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. make them, yeah, like telling people, you know, act right, you know? <laughs> to keep your crown up. That's, the, that's how Lauren's <laughs> music makes people like, feel. Yes, you gotta know. You gotta know. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I love it. So, so are these same uh, people you just mentioned as far as collaborating with, are they on your playlist? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, my playlist, listen, is <laughs> my playlist goes back to, I would say, probably about 1960. It gets real thick in the 70s. That's like the bulk of yeah. what I listen to on a regular. And actually, a little bit of the 80s now, too. But that's that's really... That's mostly it for me. <laughs> and then the Neo Soul. There's the Neo Soul oh, piece too. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you couldn't help it with your mother and I. You couldn't help it. The way Listen, you the Ooh. elders made sure. <laughs> all of the kids, all of the kids, all of our kids. Yeah. Because we're just so, people ask them, you know, if you ride with a girl, like, oh, you know that song, like, I'm going to play this song. <laughs> yeah, that's all. You know, and honestly, I was, it was a disadvantage growing up because it took me a while to really know popular music because all they were playing <laughs> were, uh, were songs that were 30 years old, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's wow. Yeah, classic, baby. Yeah. Classic. So, uh, you know, and part of the reason I asked that question was because we know that you just don't do those particular genres. I mean, you, you kind of remind us, I mean, we, we were listening to a couple of your uh, cuts and almost one of them almost had like a Billie Holiday feel to it. 
sick of it. Period. Uh, yeah. Oh. So, I mean, so you get really nostalgic mm-hmm. with your music. You know, where does that come from? That comes from, I mean, like I said, listening to those artists and the emotion and the love embedded in those songs. I'm like, I, it's hard to find stuff like that nowadays, but yes. I'm just gonna, you know, try to bury myself into those words and bring them back to life, you know? Cause it's yeah, like, man, right. I think of like, oh, I was listening to, um, the Isley Brothers la- last week, all week, mm-hmm. all week. And I'm like, these songs, people ain't singing about love like this no more, you know? We people say that all the time. Hear the affection. Right. Yeah, so I guess when I sing older songs and I, I hope um, it's able to translate in my own music, mm-hmm. um, it's just that level of tenderness and thoughtfulness. It's like, we need to be singing about love because love is the only thing that's gonna keep us here, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. True, it's like the Bible said, and of these three, the greatest of these is love. Yes. yes. Listen, if you it's have, about faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. Yeah. I got a question. If you had three wishes, what would you wish for? Oh, if I had three wishes. You know, I just moved into my house. So right now, <laughs> I would wish for a couch so I can have some company. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would, I would wish for a couch. Couches are on back order. It's like every piece of furniture. I didn't even know it was a thing, you know, but furnishing a house for the first time, it takes a minute, eight weeks for stuff to come. So oh, I would wish for a couch. You right got special water stuff then. Yeah. <laughs> If you just go to Walmart and, and yeah, pick no, out, no, no, no. I need something sturdy. <laughs> I'm just playing. Something, you know, to fit the vibe. So, no, yes. just Walmart, but I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always playing. I'm always playing. What's your second wish? A second wish. Um, I, I would wish that somehow, some way that there would be like an end to, let me combine it. This is like my humanitarian answer <laughs> would be like global warming immediately has to like, we got to figure that out. So if, if the world could just cool down, that would be my second wish. Um, and then my third wish, you know, I, I would just wish for everybody to be at peace internally, you know, because I think, yeah, I feel like a lot of times we take each other out, out of our own peace, you know, out of each other's peace. And if we could all just have constant respect, you know, like yeah. let me just honor their everything about every person I run into. I just want to honor them, you know, yes. um, so we can just. I don't know. Just be living good. Life is just too precious. It is. Life is too precious. Is. Wow. I love it. Continual peace. Yeah. Constant peace. Yeah. That's, it. that's it right there. That's it, baby. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that's the mindset of a winner. Yeah. Amen. So uh, we are going to break for commercial. And when we come back, as you know, on our show, uh, we have people write us in letters or to give us topics to go over. So we got a letter tonight, and we want you from a young person's perspective mm-hmm. to give us some wisdom on this, okay? Can't wait okay. to hear it. Don't right. go away. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. Love and Black with Tori and Terry is officially live across Apple Music, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. 
iHeart Media platforms. At Love and Black with Tori and Terry, we cultivate positive love conversations, which means that your love is always in the positive. Join us as we discuss marriage, relationships, and singles topics, as well as answer your letters on air. To be a guest on the show, advertise, sponsor, or submit a topic, email us at loveandblack1 at gmail.com. Find us by typing Love in Black with Tori and Terry in your preferred media platform. We now return to Love in Black with Tori and Terry. Hey, and we're back. And we got our special guest, Grammy Award winning Crystal Autumn. <laughs> And family member, and family member, and remember, my wife did twice. <laughs> so, uh, hey, we were uh, rounding out your questions and all. And um, did we have one more? Yeah, but I want to say something. Oh, okay. At the end of the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, guys, you know what time this is? It's time we read our letter of the, of the night. And um, the letter of the of the night comes. Oh, I can't even say. No, you don't. <laughs> I know, right? I, I thought that? I was on you another show. Somebody has to death. <laughs> All right. So, Crystal, uh, as you know, on our show, we do uh, up that letter, and you know, one we see, we pick it out, and we. Um, Go in on it, you know, giving them some advice and all. So we definitely want to hear your perspective, okay? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, she feels right. alive. Let's do it. Dear Tori and Terry, my fiance and I have been together for about two years now. We are really on the same page for most things other than how to handle his relationship with his ex-wife slash mother of his son. Mm-hmm. They spent a lot of time talking on the phone, but when I'm around, they act like their worst enemies. I suspect things are not as they seem as he won't give me any answers. I love him, but I don't need this drama. Can you help? I don't know what kind of help you want other than, hey, send him back to his old, his old, old lady <laughs> and, and yeah. cut the drama out your life. But, yeah. you know, that, that, that's just the, initial, that's just the initial that. thought in my head, but we're going to get into it. What you got, babe? Communication. Yeah. Lack of. Well, it's uh, not he communicating. He just ain't communicating with no, her. No, <laughs> lack of communication as far as you communicating or what it is you need to know. Just boldly, what is this? What's, what's going on here? Exactly. What is this? Exactly. You know, I mean, just break it down. You know, I come in the room, you act like your enemies, you're not. What's going on here? I don't know how old the child is, how much there really needs to be a lot of communication between the two of them. But I mean, even so, an ex is an ex. And so that means there's boundaries there, other things that are discussed, what time they're discussed, how long they're discussed, and if you're present when it's being discussed. Uh-huh. You need to be also, hold on, you also need to be a part of the discussion if it means something that when he comes to your house or, you know, whatever the case may be. So you definitely need to be present on that conversation, or at least know and feel comfortable with the conversation. She said that they spent a lot of time talking. That's why I said he is communicating. Crystal, what you think about that? Well, he communicated with her. Well, the two things that stood out to me were, you said that fiance, right? Yep. Okay. That for me, maybe it's because of, you know, my age, but that means there's no paper signed. Yeah. I don't want no drama. But, um, you know, aside from that, I, I think a woman's instinct is correct nine times out of ten. Oh, and, don't lie. You know, you can do it as much investigating as many, you know, bring it to him even if you want to. You liable to get one answer or another. Yeah. Trust your instinct and don't let it drive you crazy because that feeling in your stomach will make you sick yeah. trying to make sense of something that just does not add up so wow and, 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 you know what crystal and baby um i think part of what what you said is definitely a lack of not only lack of communication between the two of them the fiance and him but also a lack of boundaries mm-hmm. because what do they have to talk about mm-hmm. if, if their child isn't sick if their child is, is, isn't in trouble in school or something or if they're not discussing you know, hey, I know it's your week, but can you watch him this weekend or whatever? You know, if it's not pertaining to something like that, what do they have to talk about? If they got to talk that much, they should be together anyway. Exactly. <laughs> you know, why leave the relationship? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, we find out that 
you know, the ex, and I'm not saying the man, but I'm just saying the ex right now, it could be the woman as well, are still carrying on or having relations with the, you know, the ex and, you know, and, and thinking that they have the best of both worlds. So you really have to have a conversation with him and not like put the brakes on and say, hey, you know, you need to marry me right now or we can stop this stuff because that's not going to stop anything. anything. That's not going to fix anything. You have to have a conversation with him. You have to sit down, establish expectations and boundaries within your marriage. Mm -hmm. So, or in, even in your relationship in this case. And, and then, you know, and, and ask those questions. Hey, you know, what are you talking about? You know, and, and play it out. Hey, I was sitting in the back room listening. So I just want to make sure. I wasn't lying like that. You didn't got caught, don't she you? She may have been listening. Well, she was, she was, but don't try to play it off like just pretend like you know. Uh, and the only, the only, reason I, the only reason I say that is because she knows <laughs> that she can her heart hard before she walks in the room. So something, you know, she, she ain't just walking in every time. You know, she like got her ear to the, you know, her expression to the she falls heavy. She's heard something. <laughs> But the, you know, the main thing is that pay attention. Yeah, you got to pay attention. Pay attention to them signs, pay yep. attention to the red flags. They are there for a reason. Yep. And what's happening in your relationship? I mean, we, you know, we don't know if they have a good relationship. We don't know if, if they have a bad relationship. But obviously, she says, I don't need this drama. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's, it's much deeper yeah. than what this letter is. Yeah. Right. I think if she if she had the nerve to write a whole letter, she got enough evidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hey, that is really real. And you know what? You trust your gut because that as a fiance, this is supposed to be good time. This is supposed to be exciting. You should be thrilled yeah. about setting a date and what that's gonna look like and your life together. But that's gonna look like I don't know if you guys even got prenatal counseling as a Mm, but you definitely, so. you definitely need to get some if that's something that you really want to work through. Yeah. But pay attention. If you know, walk like, quacks like, <laughs> looks like, smells like, it must be. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you're sure. It, it, Whenever it, it, you get ready, you know, to jump the road, you always want to make yeah. sure. And you know, so she said they've been together for about two years and really on the same page for most things. Which means that they still have some issues in other areas. Uh, but when they talk about, when she talks about how to handle this relationship, you know, you have to have that conversation, though. I, I, we keep going back to conversation because it's all about communication. And you need to, you know, put your foot down. I yeah, mean, I don't understand why this is even a thing. Because you should be so comfortable with being like, oh, what's this? I'm not feeling this. Exactly. And that should be baby, what is it you're not feeling? What do I need to fix? Yep. That's what that should be if you're that one. Yep. I mean, obviously, because she's not the one. Because you're there. Yep. So if she's not the one, and it's not about her, it's about him as far as what, what are we doing here? What is this? And you know, I'm going to fall out of my chair if I find out that this kid is like 24, 25 years old. <laughs> you know, you have to be I'm just saying. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, she's talking about, she didn't say kids, she said son, so. Yeah, the conversation does not need to be as lengthy, as much. Yeah. And again, you should be brought into the fold. I mean, you know, there's some people that are like, yo, I got a woman that's about to be my wife. So Y'all's communication, you guys work it out. You will be going through her now. Exactly. You will be going through him now. I mean, hey, I mean, I don't know. I could, be, I could spend a lot of time talking. That's the whole point that they're asking, so. Something, something, yeah, <laughs> something definitely up. Exactly. But again, we, we hear it all the time where there's relations going on between those two and that person thinks that they have the best of both worlds. So. I do want to offer this. If, in fact, that what, you know, what this seems to be is exactly that, make sure you're good. Mm -hmm. Do what you need, need to do to be good. And if that means even you seeking some type of counseling as an exit, that you, you know, you make sure you're good. You do what you need to do. So you're, you were talking about peace earlier. Peace is exactly. important. You can't put a price on it. Exactly. Make sure you have it. Is that your closing argument? That's mine. Crystal, what's your closing argument on this? Oh, my closing argument oh. is, listen, I'm not losing no sleep over nobody, so. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hear you on that one. 
That's the truth. Yeah. So I think that again, and in this order maybe, but uh, you need to pray on on your relationship. You know, pray to find out to have doors open, door things revealed. You need counseling, right? And I and I'm not saying that because we're counselors, but so many people come to us after their wedding, not before. You get some they come some before, come before too. but the majority, 98% of our clients come to us after they're already married. So not to say that even if you have marriage counseling, you won't go through anything, but that's what marriage counseling is for, premarital counseling rather, it's for to identify things that could occur in your uh, upcoming marriage. And address and them. And to, to show you how to address them. Now, you'll, you'll probably still need counseling after the fact, but um, that's what the purpose of the premarital is for. Um, after the counseling, make sure you establish lines of communication with him and let him know what's appropriate and what's not appropriate because he's not being appropriate in any of these situations. You know, and... Um, that's what she said. So, uh, you know, so look at it like that. So, God, counseling, communication, and we can't say it enough, boundaries. You have to, have to have establish them. these boundaries within your relationship. And especially you in this situation. This exactly. is not going away. He's exactly. got a son and a son and a mother. Gotta so make it it is in order. It's out of order right now. It is. Uh, when we talk about boundaries and expectation or expectation of boundaries, you, you're sitting down together. You're not coming up with all the boundaries and expectations for your relationship. You're sitting down together, discussing these things and implementing them as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're adults, but you know you need to find a way of holding each other accountable for these actions that they cross over these boundaries or don't meet these expectations and all in your, in your marriage. So um, that's what I would suggest to you. And in my final, final closing argument, Hey guys, remember, you don't have to be in the, a Grammy Award singing. We need to be considered a right. star. We're all stars in our own right because we are all children of God. Yes. Unlock your gifts that He's given to you and show the world what you're made of. Amen. And I Amen. guarantee you'll prosper. I That's guarantee. Beautiful. That's so, I'm always right sometimes. Uh, I got one more question. I got one cousin. Niece, I got one more question. If you could trade lives with someone, who would it be and why? Mm. If I could trade lives. Hmm. Okay, this is crazy. <coughs> Excuse me. It would have to be like my great grandchild. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. Come with it. Come on, bring it. Yeah, I would like to see like I would like to see if my legacy does anything. Or... Yes. Wow. That's phenomenal. I love that answer. That's probably, <laughs> Wonderful. That is probably the best answer that we would ever hear for that because as you asked that <laughs> No, I say that because I'm thinking of myself and you know, especially especially been doing counseling. You know, mm -hmm. the last year and all, there's nobody that I would want to trade places with. No, not really. <laughs> it would have to be somebody yeah. that doesn't. Everybody got stuff. Face stuff. <laughs> you know, I want to deal with all <laughs> that I got. <laughs> right. And I should have said for a day, and I'm glad that I didn't because that answer right there is incredible. It's it just is. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and what would you what would you do? He goes on. What would you do looking at that futuristically, right? And if they if they didn't call your lesson, your lesson, would you have them go outside and get a switch so you can uh whip that no. <laughs> your own butt? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, oh, I, you know what? We'll leave that right there. We're not going to mess with that. That right. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. That's it. That's legacy. That's exactly what happened here. That's what your ancestors are seeing in you. Your ancestors are seeing that. They are glowing. Yeah. Those that's ancestors fun. that were waiting in the water. Um, that's right. That's right. No we pun so intended. Grateful. We are. We, we're grateful and we're thankful to have you come on tonight. We are just, we're, we're pleased with the things that you and your, your sisters are doing. Your sisters are so doing. So proud. Yeah. We, we, you know, we had her on, on our show. Yeah, we had uh, Treasure on. 
Oh, you did? Yes, we had treasure on. That was I awesome. didn't even know One that. Black yeah, we had, we had, we had, we had a young gift yeah. black show. We had young gift black show. And we had... Um, we need Bianca Vivian now. Yeah. Yes. Is she still doing the podcast? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but, uh, and yeah, hey, we're not picking them because they're family members, but because they have they're contributions to offer here. Yeah, they yeah. are. Thank you. So, we love you and we thank you again for coming on. And those of you that want to either be on our shows or have a letter you want read or even a topic you want us to discuss, all you have to do is email us at loveandblack, the number one, at gmail.com and let us know what you're talking about and we will gladly get with you. All right. So, yeah, I got it. That's all I got. I oh, just yeah. want to say have a wonderful weekend. Happy Friday. Make love, not war. And we'll see you next week. That's Be right. good to each other. I'll see you later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.